Good evening. It's good to see everyone here tonight. I hope your Bible study was as good as ours was. I know everybody, if you're in God's Word and you're learning, then it's good. It's good to see our visitors here. If you're visiting with us, we're especially glad to see you. We would love to get to know you a little bit better if you can hang around a little bit after uh, this devotion. Uh, just some announcements for our members. Uh, please keep Regina, Regina Clower, Myrtle Gordon, and Eric Davis in your prayers. They have COVID, all three of them. Eric is better, but Gina, Regina and Myrtle are still feeling pretty, not feeling very well. Uh, also, Eric's dad is in ICU in Louisiana, and he is sick with COVID. So keep all these in your prayers. Cynthia Donahoe, surgery today. Keep her in your prayers through uh, as she really tries to recover. This is on her own. And please keep Shelly uh, Patterson. She's the lady from Tasmania that we mentioned Sunday that watches us online. Uh, so she had a successful surgery and wants to thank everyone for her thoughts and prayers. Also keep James and Joyce Parker in your prayers. These are the friends of the Freemans and they're still both in the hospital. Just some announcements about activities. There will be a work day Saturday, October the 9th at 8, 8 a.m. This is to build a concrete box for our water filter system and other projects as well. So that's not, if you can't do the, the concrete box, which I probably couldn't do, there are other things to be done. Uh, youth area-wide, Sunday, October 10th at North Brandon, the bus will be leaving the church at 4 p.m. Uh, youth hang time is Wednesday, October uh, the 13th. Uh, that's a week from today. Uh, congregational singing, October the 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. Please bring, bring, bring drinks and desserts. Bill will be provided. Wedding shower for Nora Sturgeon on October the 17th from 3.30 to 5. She's registered at Amazon, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Target. Uh, remember that uh, the day of our trunk and treat, uh, that is a Sunday, October the 31st. There will be a fellowship meal following the morning service. There will be no after, um, we will be having a 1245 afternoon service after our meal. And then there will not be a uh, 530 service. And the trunk and treat will begin at 630 on that same day. We need volunteers to, record to uh, de decorate the cars and trunks to pass out candy for the children. This is also a community, community event, so please invite your friends and neighbors to bring enough candy to pass out to our visitors. Uh, on that, we also need people to bring the service. Uh, and I think Hammer's not going to be provided, is that correct? So I know that was pretty quick. If you have any questions about particularly those activities or any of our sick, please come see me. I'll be glad to tell you what I just said. As we begin, let's go to our Father prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this midweek time that your family here can come together and our visitors also can come together. Father, we're thankful for the Bible study that we've had. Father, we pray that we will stay in your word and learn more of how you would have us to be in this life, Father. We're thankful for your son and we're thankful for the sacrifice he made for our own Abraham and shed his blood so that our sins can be forgiven, Father. And we're thankful as we read through your word, Father, that we understand as long as we walk in the life that the blood continually cleanses us. We're grateful for that. Father, we do pray for all of those that I've mentioned who are sick, for, the, for Regina Clower, Myrtle Gordon, and Eric Davis, for his father, Father, for Cynthia Donahoe and Shelly Pedersen, and James and Joyce Parker. We pray for all of their needs, Father. You know what they are, Father. We just pray that you can take care of each one. Father, will be with us tonight as we continue our devotion to you. Help us sing song, this song that will remind us of you and your son, Father. Help Richard as he brings about the lesson. Help us to take what he says and apply it to our lives as he teaches us your word. Father, love us and take care of us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will, mark your song books, uh, number 696. With the song after the emotional this evening. Before the lesson, we'll sing number 286. 286.
be. If you would be turning over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. <clears throat> I'll get there in just a minute. 1 Timothy chapter 6. <clears throat> I didn't really know how to start this lesson, so I thought I'd ask a question to start with, and that is, what do we pursue? Uh, I started thinking about that this week, and when I thought about that devotional tonight, and I, I really think that life is a a lot of pursuing little small or sometimes large things in our life. Uh, and the world would tell us the important things in life are that we ought to pursue is wealth. Uh, nothing wrong with having money, nothing wrong with, with being better in this life financially. Uh, but he talks about, uh, the Bible talks about pursuing wealth. Uh, and he tells us about the dangers. You can see that over in the book of Proverbs. I'll just give you three little short ones and then we'll get into the point I want to try to make tonight. Uh, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28, who trust in riches will fall. In 27, 24, for riches are not forever. And then in 28, 20, he who makes haste to be rich will not go unpunished. So if we're pursuing riches in life, uh, that's like I say, there's nothing wrong with being, being wealthy, nothing wrong with pursuing uh, happiness through uh, uh, good things. Uh, the question becomes what we do with it. But the Bible tells us, probably more important for us as Christians, what we ought to be pursuing uh, is spiritual riches. And I see that in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 through 19. <clears throat> Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Isn't it, isn't it interesting in the Bible when you read uh, the words uh, uh, good and works, usually they're put together uh, in the Bible, good works. Uh, Jesus says, let your, uh, let your light shine, uh, so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Paul tells the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Walk in what? Walk in good works. So God calls His people to be good workers. Uh, every day we should wake up understanding that we have another opportunity to do something good for God and for God's people. Uh, Paul uh, explains this about Jesus. He says, Who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify and purify him himself, uh, his own special people. Listen to this: zealous for good works. Why did Why did Christ do all that? Because He wanted to redeem us. Why did He want to redeem us? First, because He loved us, and because He wants us to be zealous for good works. Uh, look around us, folks. Christ redeemed us for good works, and we have so many people in here at this place who are trying to do good works, and it, it needs to be what we are pursuing. Uh, in our life. And I would just close with this one story. And it comes from Luke chapter 16. And we all know it. We have this famous rich man. We don't even know his name. All we know is the Bible. The Bible calls him a certain rich man. We don't even know how much money he has. We know in Luke uh, chapter 16 and verse 19. He's cl he clothes himself in purple. And linen. <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's it's to me, it's kind of revealing the way he dresses himself, much money that he has. But all we know about him is he's a rich man. But outside of his gate, there's a poor man named Lazarus. I'm seeing, uh, assuming from this imagery that we have here that this rich man passes him every day, sees him every day, takes no opportunity to help him. Guess what? He dies. And when he dies, the Bible tells us he lifted up his eyes being in torment, saw Abraham afar away and Lazarus in his bosom. Can you imagine what ran through his mind? I forsook an opportunity. 
that opportunity that I neglected every day is tomorrow's regret. We have so many opportunities to pursue the works of the church, the works of God. He is zealous for us to be about good works. And we need to think about that every day that we start out. What can I do to do good for God today? What can I do to be good to His church today? And help them and help myself to grow as a Christian. Tonight, if you have a need for the church, for the prayers of the congregation, put on Christ's message. We ask that you come on together we stand here. There's a sound sound of free tis for you and me. Keep us safe for the next appointed time, just I'm praying. Amen.